In this movie, we're going to um, go over a lot of the things we've missed so far in the previous 13 movies or so. Uh, we'll look at mostly commands that are available on this main screen. A lot of things are available under File. We've done the, the easy start and stuff. You can open a file that's been on a CD or on a floppy drive. Floppies aren't used much anymore, or a memory stick. And you can see open from floppy CD drive, the A drive. Well, if you have a memory stick, maybe your memory stick is the G drive. What you would do then, if it's not the A drive, you go over here, click on Preferences, click on this uh, File Options, and the default floppy, let's make that the G drive. And you go over here. Now we're going to open from the G drive and save to the G drive. This is real handy for moving uh, files, test files, from one computer to another. Um, open from all saved tests. There's some other options under here. We can delete an entire folder, which be, if you do it, be very careful. Click on here, delete. There's not many tests up here, but it says, it's warning you. Are you sure you want to do this? If you're not sure, click on no. To delete just one test at a time, you click on here, and then you just delete the single test. You can add a new folder here, and there's another place to add a new folder here. That's, again, another container for you to start putting your tests in. Maybe you got a new customer you just got. You want to make a new folder for them. Um, advanced. Advanced lets you, uh, we don't need to save these changes. Advanced gets you the standard Windows open a file screen. And the advantage of this is you can move around any place on the computer. See, I have a different portflow analyzer installed here. And let's say if I go into the PFA DAT in that portflow analyzer in my tests, I'm going to open up this test. I want to pull this test from a different installation. And it could be if you're on a network, a different computer somewhere else on your network. Um, I want to open this test. And you can see here, this is something we haven't gotten into, but this particular test was saved in metric units. But the program here is in English units, as set in the preferences menu. It says all the numbers from the metric file will be converted to English units. So the nice thing about our program is when you make a change, it will make a change on all your files only as you open them. But it keeps you from making a mistake and making a mess of things like opening a metric file, but you're set to English, and now you screwed up, and now the file's corrupted or something. So uh, it's going to convert all the stuff to English because that's the units we're in. And I'll show you where that is in preferences. Uh, let's see. I think it's under definitions. Nope. Under general operation, I bet. Where is it? There, 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 there. There it is. It was under definitions. It's units, English, or metric. I'm going to leave it at met or English. If you click on cancel, it, you just back out of that preference of screen with no changes. Another very useful thing, especially when you start to have a lot of test files, is this filter or find. And what it's going to let you do is let's go to the examples because we've got the most tests there. Filter. It says, what are you want to look for? Uh, maybe you want to look for a test date that is before is less than or before a certain time or something. Or you want to look for a test where the uh, intake valve diameter was less than this or greater than this. Or the test comments had contains the word Mike. So let's see if we find anything that contains the word Mike in the test comments. Show only files fitting these conditions. And you can see zero files fit the three filter specs. Okay, we only use one of the three, but we go back to filter. And just to show you how it works, I'm going to say anything there with an MI in it, nothing. Now, any test comments that just have an M in it. And now you can see these. Somewhere in here, there should be an example, right? There's the M, and there's the M, and an M, and an M. So this is how that works. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. And it, it, it searched all files, not just the, the examples folder. It searched all files. So if we go back here. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong on that. We'll go back here. Okay, nine tests fit the filter spec. So there could have been more um, that fit it. If we go to MI. There is two that have an MI in it. And boom in. Um, so anyway, that gives you some idea how to search for different things. Filtering is very can be very powerful and very useful when you have a ton of tests you want to look for and and you're trying to remember what file it was. And as you might expect, uh, let's see, filtering. We're going to turn filtering off, show all files. You got to delete here, so you can delete certain things. Now, we're not going to let you delete things out of the examples folder. We want to keep this thing pristine. And you can also not save tests to the examples folder. We want these examples to stay here. So if we're troubleshooting, we can have you pull out an example. But if you were in Jones here, let's say, click on that, click on delete. It says, do you permanently want to delete that? And you say yes, and now that test is gone. Be sure you want to do that before you do it. So that's some things on opening if you want to save. Save means take the test as it is right now and save all the changes to the same name. Or save as is take this test and save it to a new name. And here's where you can also, if you want, add a new folder here. I want to take this, and remember we pulled this in from a different portflow analyzer. So I may want to add a new folder, type in that folder name here, because we know this guy belongs, this uh, particular head belongs to a customer called Smith, and I want to change his name. I want to get rid of that DAT and put on something like November. And now if we go over here, file, open from all saved tests, you see we got a new folder, Smith, and here's that new test here. Another useful feature here is the edit feature. You can copy, swap, or erase ports. Maybe. You you can insert additional rows, insert it and add columns, change the number of ports, cylinder numbering, and valve sizes. So the, a lot of this stuff would be like this. It's just going to say go into your head specs. But it's a nice reminder for you, like, if I want to change some, how do I do it? I want to change this. Oh, yeah, I go into head specs. And that's where down here I change how many, uh, the cylinder numbering and how many cylinders I'm working with and stuff. And you saw that again, save the temporary file. We're always making backup copies. We can import different things. We can import WinFlow files. That's the old uh, something Superflow had several years ago for doing their testing. Flow profiles. Uh, Vista threw some curves at us, so there might be some lost Vista files that this thing might do. Import from an early port flow analyzer from version 3 or import individual test files. Export. Not even sure what this is doing right now. Oh, it's giving us help. This is how to export data, so I'm giving you some help. But a lot of this has to do with making ASCII files, which we've covered in a uh, different thing. To do an ASCII file, you click on report, you make some kind of report. Click on File up here, and this is how you export through this ASCII file option. So you can export. You can email this test flow test file. That's similar to what we did in graphs. You're going to make a, re well, it's going to attach this test. Now, the person receiving it, however, needs a port flow analyzer to do anything with this. That's the advantage of some of the other things when you export a, a printed report or a graph. They don't need the port flow analyzer. They can't manipulate the data. So, but I mean, if you know somebody else who's got a port flow analyzer, this is what you would do to, ex to email them a test. Uh, back up your flow test. Pretty useful. You want to get in the habit of doing this. This will back up everything, or you can restore from a backup. Restore all backed up tests in a particular backup, or restore tests just one at a time. 
printing the main screen, printing a blank worksheet. So there's a lot of options under File. We got the Edit options, Graph and Report. We've gone over Test options where you got all this information about how you're going to run your tests and such. Your Head options or your specifications. Your Head, your Flow Bench, your Engine specs, Preferences. This is very powerful. Uh, you are probably going to want to click on Help to get a good idea what's going on here and check your manual because preferences, there's a lot of information here about how you can fine tune your program to work and do what you want it to do. So I, I strongly recommend you take a look at preferences and the help that describes the preferences. And like most programs, there is a help section. Um, about Portflow Analyzer gives you your version number. You can click on this to jump to our website. Display the user manual in different supplements and PDF format. Again, performance trends on the web. Um, some debugging here for if you have our data loggers. So there is a lot of um, a lot of different options with the program. And when all else fails, check out the user manual.